Namo Buddhaya, this is Sabina when I welcome you. In this video, I'm discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 92. This is with Sela, uh, also titled Sela Sutta. Right? Uh, so, the context here is that Buddha was wandering in the lands of northern Apanas and there was a matted hair ascetic uh, known as Kenya. And Kenya came to know that ascetic Gautama is traveling in their land. He is from the Sakya family, a fully realized one. So, Kenya approached the Buddha, exchanged greetings with him. And, uh, and Buddha educated, encouraged him, inspired him with the Dhamma talk. Then he said to the Buddha, that master, can you please come for a tomorrow's meal, uh, you and your Sangha? Uh, so Buddha said, is that Sangha is large, Kenya, there are 1,250 mendicants and, are you and you are devoted to the Brahmins. So Kenya was not relenting, second, third time he asked, so then Buddha consented with his silence. So uh, Kenya went to his hermitage. Uh, went to his hermitage and started preparing for tomorrow's uh, 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 meal. And at that time, there was a, a Brahmin, Sila, who was also residing in Apana. Uh, uh, Kenya was basically a student of uh, Sila. So Sila was the main kind of a, uh, a Brahmin. And now, uh, Sila was very learned. He had mastered the Vedas, he had mastered philology, cosmology, and in, well versed in lot of things and he was teaching 300 students to recite the hymns right and that time uh, so Sila uh, 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 while going for a walk escorted by 300 students approached Kenya's hermitage and he came he asked what is happening is there some marriage or some king is coming so he said no it is ascetic Gautama who is arising, arriving with his 1250 mendicants he is a perfectly realized one so Kenya's were like, uh, the bulb went, went on. He said, did you say the awakened one? So uh, uh, Kenya said, yes, I said the awakened one. So Sila thought that it's hard to fi even find the word awakened one in the world. 32 marks of a great man have been handed down. So in Brahmanic, Brahmanism, there are some 32 marks of a great man that are there. Uh, if a person possesses them, then either he, is a, he becomes a king, wheel-turning monarch who reigns across the world, or becomes a monk who uh, uh, basically a perf, perf, becomes a fully awakened Buddha. So, uh, so uh, Ken, he, Sela asked Kenya that where is the blessed one right now? So he said uh, he is at, at, around at the line of the blue forest. So Sela together with the students uh, went up to the Buddha and uh, 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 he said to the students come quietly gentlemen, treat gently for the Buddhas are intimidating like the lion living alone. Right? When I am consulting with the aesthetic Gautama, do not interrupt. Right? Okay. So he went up to the Buddha, exchanged greetings. He, then he scrutinized the Buddha for the 32 marks. He could find the 30 marks. Now it has its uh, resonance with uh, Middle Discourses 91, where again the same thing, some other Brahmin also checked. He checked for 30 marks. There are two things he could not check, which is the private parts, the foreskin of the private part and the tongue. So Buddha, because he was clear sentient uh, and uh, 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 clear sentient he came to just know that he was thinking like this so through his psychic power he also showed the two, two things so uh, Sela came to know fully that he has all the 32 marks of a uh, uh, possesses the 32 marks completely but he still had this doubt I don't know whether it is whether or not he is an awakened one because if someone possesses 32 marks then it can be he can be a ruler of a kingdom a conqueror of the world or he can be, a, so he wanted to know whether he is a fully awakened Buddha. So he said that why don't I, you know, praise him and let's see what, what he reveals. So there is this whole, through verses, there is this discussion that is happening that he says, Oh, blessed one, your body is perfect. You are radiant, handsome, lovely to behold, golden colored, with teeth so white. You are strong. The characteristics of a handsome man, the marks of a great man are all found. Your eyes are clear. You are formidable. In the midst of the Sangha, you shine like a sun. You are mendicant fine to see with skin of golden sheen. Uh, but with such excellent appearance, why do you want? what do you want with this ascetic life? You are fit to be a king, a wheel-turning monarch, a chief of charioteers, victorious in the four quarters, lord of all India, aristocrat, noble and king, ought to follow your rule. Gautama, you should reign as kings of kings, lords of men. So he's like extolling him that you have so much virtues, you should be a king, you should be ruling the... Uh, the kingdom, the, the entire world, Buddha says, I am a king, Sela, the supreme king of the teaching. By the teaching, I roll forth the wheel. So this is 
which cannot be rolled back so this again goes back to the uh, buddha's first discourse dhamma chakra pavatana sutta 56 Uh, SN 56.11, which was the first discourse that would be given, that where he said that that when he gave the first knowledge to the five ascetics in Varanasi, uh, uh, in Sarnath, he said the wheel of dharma have has been started. Now no one can turn it back. So same thing Buddha is basically referring here. So he said, uh, Sina uh, Sila said that you claim to be awakened the supreme king, and you say that I roll forth the teaching. Then who is your general, the disciple who follows the teacher's way? Who keeps rolling the forth the te- te- the teaching of you roll forth? Uh, so Buddha says, by me the wheel was rolled forth, the supreme wheel of the teaching. Sariputta taking after the realized one keeps it rolling on. So Sariputta, the one of the chief disciples of the Buddha, he is known to be the general of the Dhamma who keeps the wheel wheel rolling. And actually, the wheel of the uh, Buddha's teaching after his death, Buddha said, the Sangha, the Sangha uh, of mendicants. of lay people and mendicants coming together and practicing my teaching they will be keeping to roll the wheel of the uh, my teaching but here specific references regarding the general of the dhamma which is the sariputta buddha said i have known what is what should be known what buddha had known the four noble truths what is suffering arising of uh, the cause of suffering cessation of suffering and the way to end the cessation of suffering so buddha is saying i have known what needs to be known and developed what needs to be developed and given up what should be given up and so brahmin i am the buddha dispel your doubt in me make up your mind brahmin the sight of the buddha is hard to find again i am a buddha brahmin the supreme surgeon one who one of those whose appearance in the world is hard to find again holy unequaled crusher of mara's army having subdued all my opponents i rejoice fearing nothing from any quarter pay heed sirs to what is spoken by the clear eyed one the surgeon the great hero roars like a lion in the jungle and this is basically reflecting how buddha was so clear in his awakening and what was so clear in demonstrating that he is completely realized one it's not out of some false pride or arrogance that he is saying because he was so fully awakened and fo- so fully realized he it's like he is just presenting facts and he said there are, there are other discourses the discourse on the lion's roar he said to to his disciples also that the teaching that i have proclaimed i have given you is very very precious spread it like a lion roars in the jungle so what happens when a lion ro- lion roars in the jungle what happens in everybody wakes up all the animals they just wake up similarly buddha said to the mendicants that roar this teaching like a lion in the jungle right so buddha is similarly he is like uh, he is a lion here in this discourse holy unequaled crusher of mara's army who would not be inspired by him even even those whose nature is dark so this is basically buddha is referring here to nature is dark means even those basically there can be two possibilities what buddha is saying one is people who are at that time this socially economic context was there this untouchables and people of lower caste were there buddha always said that my knowledge is for all all castes are equal so he said my knowledge is also for every everyone there is no higher caste or lower caste right so buddha says those who wish may follow me those who don't may go right here so buddha was not interested in creating like followings and everything he said just who is interested take my teaching become a sangha lay become an ordained in the sangha or practice as a lay person so buddha was not interested in making adding people in his sangha and all nothing like that was there people of their own free will they exercise their choice some became Uh, a part of the uh, sangha some remained as lay people and be remaining as the followers and some even didn't take become followers that is perfectly fine so right here i go forth in his presence the one of such splendid uh, wisdom so so then the mendicants now the mendicants who were with the sela they they also wanted to be part of the sangha so sir so, so if you endorse the teaching of the buddha we'll also go forth in the presence the one of such a uh, splendid wisdom so here basically when he says right here i'll go forth in the presence of the one this is what sela is saying now sela is converted sela is clear that he wants to go so mendicant said we also want to go so these 300 brahmins with join palms held up ask may we lead the spiritual life in your presence blessed one this then buddha says the spiritual life is well explained said the buddha apparent in the present life immediately effective now friends this is very important for us as practitioners 
of Buddha's teachings as followers of the Buddha. Buddha says, apparent in the present life, immediately effective. So if we try to follow the Buddha's teachings from this in this life, it is immediately, it is not like it will get effective after like 10 lifetimes or some very difficult work has to be done. No, Buddha has practiced whatever teachings he has given is immediately effective. Here the going forth isn't in vain. That means in other teachings, they, they are the teachings are not correct and there is basically the person doesn't get any liberation. But here Buddha is saying that when you go forth in the teaching, it is not in vain for one who trains with diligence. One who trains with diligence, for him the teachings don't go in vain. They give the result. And the Brahmin, together with his assembly, receive the going for the ordination in the Buddha. So Kinya and his entire assembly of uh, uh, people, they got the ordination in presence of the Buddha. And when the night passed, Kinya had... Uh, and uh, No, so, so Sela, Sela uh, and his medicine, they got the uh, ordination under the Buddha. And Kinya was a Sela student. He had prepared all the food, so he uh, he kept all the food ready. Then Buddha went up and had the food. And he, as a, expressing the appreciation, he said, "The foremost sacrifice is the sacrifice to the Sangha sacred flame. The Savitri mantra is the foremost of poetic meters of humans. The king is foremost. The oceans foremost of rivers. The foremost of stars is moon. The sun is the foremost of light. For those who sacrifice seeking merit, the Sangha is the." foremost right so he had donated an, uh, a meal to the sangha so he said sangha is the foremost for getting married and then uh, sela and his assembly who were living alone withdrawn diligent keen they achieved full enlightenment and uh, sela along with his assembly went up to the seat the buddha and he said this is the eighth day so in seven days being in the buddha's practice buddha's teachings they attained enlightenment this is the eight days since we went for refuge oh clear-eyed one in these seven days, blessed one, we have been tamed in your teaching. You are the Buddha. You are the teacher. You are the sage who has overcome Mara. You have cut off the underlying talents. You have crossed over and you bring humanity across. You have transcended attachments. Your defilements are shattered. By not grasping like a lion, you have given up fear and dread. These 300 mendicants stand with joint palms raised. Stretch out to your feet, great hero. Let these giants go to the teacher. And so so deep I just feel like and you know and we can all bow down to our teacher the Buddha for his knowledge all the knowledge that he has given right so beautiful uh, you know, discourse where Sela along with his disciples uh, basically understand the Buddha's teaching commit themselves attain arhantship and then come back to the teacher and thank the teacher that we bow down to you for your knowledge and your teaching so it's a great sutta this completes MN92 and I hope this uh, video was insightful, useful. Do share your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya.